Hi, on the workbench today is a thermal imaging camera from Viver. I'm actually not entirely sure about the pronunciation, and I have heard it pronounced as Viver, Vivor, and perhaps even more ways. So if you know for sure the correct pronunciation, please correct me in the comment section below. Viver is an online reseller for tools and equipment. They contacted me and sent in this thermal camera for me to do a review. As usual, the product link can be found in the video description below. And by the way, for those who have been following my channel, you know that all my reviews are my honest views of the products provided to me. Besides the products themselves, I do not receive any monetary compensation from the vendors. And all my reviews are my genuine opinions of the products, good or bad. Sometimes I really like the product, and unfortunately some of the viewers took it the wrong way, accusing me of being paid to promote specific product. And that is absolutely not the case. And if you are one of those guys, I'd encourage you to watch more of my review videos. As you will see, there are probably more instances where I was critical of the products being reviewed. Anyway, my goal is to use each of these review opportunities to discuss the design, the principle of operations, and do some analysis in my teardown videos. Ultimately, my videos are designed to help you guys make educated decisions, and hopefully they're more than just your regular plain review videos. As for me, doing videos like this is just my hobby and my passion. I have my day job just like everyone else. Anyway, I digressed, but just wanted to provide some facts here. So back to the Viver thermal camera. The model I received is the SC240N. It is for thermal imaging only. The M and H models do have visible spectrum cameras built in. Also, the other models have slightly higher temperature range. The N model we have here can measure between minus 20 to 350 degrees Celsius, whereas the other models cover between minus 20 to 550 degrees. But the frame rate across the SC240 lineup is identical, which comes at 20 frames per second. And by the way, the 240N version I have here does not support video recording. If you need to record video, you will need to get the more expensive N or H version. The first thing you will notice about this thermal camera is just how heavy it is. There's no official specifications for the weight, but let me measure it for you, and you will just see how heavy it is. So here's a scale, let's put it on. And you can see it measures at 524 grams. And just for comparison, let's weigh the Unity UTI 692B, which is very heavy as well. But this one only weighs 492 grams for comparison. The SC240 comes with a 16 gigabytes micro SD card on top here. You can see here we have a slot for the micro SD card and also, of course, your USB-C port, which is for charging and PC communication. When it plugs in, it will show up as a flash drive. It also has a tripod mount at the bottom. You can see here. Although it does not come with a lens cover, the front side is recessed, so it does prevent you from accidentally touching the lens somewhat. Now let's power it on. For comparison, I'm going to also power on the Unity UTI 690B for comparison at the same time. So let's uh, do it. Both are booting up. Both are pretty slow at this moment. And Unity is powered up already. And it does take a few seconds longer for the Viver to power up. As you can see here, it takes quite a bit of time for both units to power up. It is on par with the performance of the Unity, which is definitely on the slower side among all the thermal cameras I have reviewed on this channel so far. But this is largely mitigated by the long battery life. The 240N has a claimed battery life of 9 hours, and the M and H version have even longer runtime. So you can just leave it powered on if you don't want to wait for it to power on every single time. Once powered on, you can see the image quality is actually excellent. I haven't looked at it in detail yet, but just by looking at the background, I can already say that the image captured by this SC240N is less noisy than what is captured on this UNI-T UTI 690B. And this is actually not surprising given that the thermal sensitivity for the SC240N is specified at less than 40 millikelvins, 
whereas the thermal sensitivity for the UTI 690B is specified at less than 60 mK. The thermal sensitivity sometimes is also specified as noise equivalent temperature difference, or NETD. In general, the lower the NETD, the less noisy the captured image, and the better the thermal image quality. The manual is actually quite intuitive on this unit, and is largely similar to other thermal cameras I have reviewed. You can get to the menu by pressing this middle button and can cycle through the items here. And to get into the specifics, you just press the button again and you get into the sub menu. But there are a couple of things I wanted to point out. Although the SC240N has a specified temperature range between minus 20 and 350 degrees, it actually has two different temperature ranges. You have to select manually. By default, the temperature range is set as between minus 20 and 150 degrees. But if you want to measure a temperature higher than 150 degrees, you will need to adjust the settings to set to the correct temperature range. Otherwise, the thermal image would be oversaturated. Here's an example. I took a picture of my space heater with a default setting a little bit earlier, and you can see the oversaturation of the image. Later, I changed the temperature range to between 100 and 350 degrees, and took another picture, and you can definitely see more details here. Switching between these two ranges does take a little bit of time, but it's significantly faster on the SC240N compared to the Unity UTI 690B. And let me bring in my Unity for comparison. And you can see both of these are set at the same range. And on the Unity, it is called high gain. So let's uh, change it to the low gain. And on this one, let's change to the other temperature range. And I will press the set at the same time here. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, both of these units take quite a bit of time to switch between the ranges. But you will see that on the Beaver, it's actually a little bit faster. So as you can see, on the Beaver, we're done. But on the Unit T, it is still going. Actually, the Unit T range switching is really slow. So let's do it again. And this time, we switch back to the high gain setting. So let's try So as you can see, if you need to switch between the ranges all the time, it might not be very convenient. But nevertheless, the Viver is a little bit faster. So that is quite tolerable. And again, the Viver is done. On the Unity, you can see it is still switching. Anyway, just wanted to point it out. So that's the temperature scale. We can also, let's come back to the measure parameter here. And you can set the emissivity and temperature this is your ambient temperature, and also you can set the distance. The focal length of the camera is fixed at 10 centimeters, so I think the distance here mainly is for calibrating the temperature readings more than anything else. But nevertheless, you can set it if you want to. And everything else is pretty much what you would expect on a thermal camera here. There is nothing special here. So let's take a look at the device information. And again, we can see that we have a SC240N. For our first test, here is an Arduino board that I have powered on for a while now. And I've been using this Arduino board to compare different thermal cameras. So you can definitely check out the other reviews and see it for yourself. And let's take a closer look. You can see that the captured thermal image is actually quite good. They're pretty crisp. And the focal distance is just about right for you to be able to discern some of the smaller features on the circuit board. And to take a picture, you can just press a trigger button. And of course, right now we have the setting to let you confirm, but uh, there is also a setting you can actually do it without confirming. So let's actually just show you that. So I go to the menu here and you can see settings, photo settings. You can see that we can actually change it to autosave instead of having to confirm. Now, if you are using the thermal camera for electronics, you probably should invest in a macro lens. I don't have one specifically made for the Viver, but let me use the one from the HIP Micro, so let's at least take a look here. Of course, I don't have a way to mount this, but let me try to align the image here. So, not sure if you can see. Once it is aligned, you can actually see a lot more details with the macro lens. And here is a single board computer that I have powered on for a while, and let's take a look. And again, you can see that 
the captured thermal image is very, very clear. And let's uh, flip it over and let's take another look. And let me take a picture, actually. I can probably superimpose it on top of the video here so you can see it better. And here is a switching power supply. I have power on for a while. Let's take a look here. Again, you can see we are able to see a lot of details. Actually, I'm quite impressed by the thermal image quality of this. Now, the only pity is I cannot take a video here, so let me actually take a picture, and we can see what we're seeing through the thermal camera here. And you can see a lot of the details here for sure. I think I forgot to mention that the thermal resolution of this camera is at 240 by 180, which is a tad lower than the standard 256 by 192. But nevertheless, the image quality, as you can see, is excellent. This actually just illustrated why the thermal resolution by itself is relatively meaningless, as we have seen plenty of thermal cameras with higher thermal resolution, but the image qualities are far inferior. The NETD in this case actually plays a huge role, as the image is less noisy. Overall, the Viver SC240N is a great thermal camera. The image quality is definitely among one of the best I have ever seen, especially considering its slightly reduced thermal resolution. Also, it is priced below $300, so it is definitely a good value for the price, in my opinion. Of course, there are a few shortcomings. Given that this model does not have video recording capability, you will have to get the other more expensive models if you do need that functionality. And the boot-up speed is on the slow side, as I mentioned earlier. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you next time.